For many animations we create using JavaScript, especially if we're dealing with the DOM, in other words, it's not a canvas-based animation, we'll be continuously setting and changing CSS values. This is actually a good thing. The relationship between JavaScript and CSS and the ease with which we can work between each of them is actually one of the things that allows a lot of the things we create on the web, especially animations, to look as powerful and behave as well as we want it to. Now here's the catch. Most of us don't do this well, but in this video, we're going to fix that. And here's the reason why. Historically, when we need to animate something, like for example, in this case, I'm animating an element from one side of the screen to another, the way we pull this off is by directly specifying the full CSS string and maybe even the property directly in our JavaScript. So in this case, you can see that on my circle element, I am using the style object, same with transform property, and what I'm passing into the transform property is a full translate 3D string. Yes, I parameterized the variable, xpos where it's not hard coded but it's being specified by my code but it's still a case where a large amount of css is living inside of our javascript now historically this was a solution but there are better ways of doing this but before we get there why is it a problem why do we even care especially if this is how things have been done for many many years the reason is twofold one it's verbose why does our javascript have long chunks of css this was a pretty compact one, but one could imagine if I'm setting, for example, a gradient or something else, my JavaScript could have a lot of large lines of CSS in it, which is not great. And it also reduces maintainability. And the reason is almost always as CSS evolves, as we decide to make changes, we will be going and modifying how we define and animate our CSS properties. And the ideal place to do all of this is not some inline CSS deep in our JavaScript code. No, the ideal place is in the CSS style rule alongside the rest of our CSS. Why do we have this unique thing where our JavaScript is the maintainer and source of truth for what is very much a problem specific to the CSS domain? And this is where CSS custom properties come to their rescue. Now, to help explain this, I'm gonna go right into code and we're gonna look at it in much greater detail here. So what I have here before I go into the explanation of what we're going to do is let's take a look at what our application is doing right now or what this page is doing. I have essentially a blue circle as you can see that's moving from the left side of the screen to the right side of the screen. Nothing too fancy there and the way it's being pulled off is that we have a body element, we have a container element called content container, just centering some things using CSS, using the display flex, not important. The interesting things to first focus on is we have our circle element which is essentially I div with an ID value of circle and the style for it is width and height 200 pixels, background color of blue and a border radius of 50%. That's what gives it the circular look. It looks like it was a circle done on the canvas. Nope, it's just a plain old div with a 50% border radius giving it a nice circular look. And the code for making this work is very similar to what you saw in the slide earlier. We have a reference to our circle element from the from our DOM, so using query selector, getting a point reference to it. We have our xpos variable, which is initialized to zero, but and then we have our animate animation loop, which changes the value of xpos every time request animation frame is called, which on this monitor is going to be once every 60 seconds. And then circle style transform is where we're setting the position of our blue circle and the value is going to be translate 3D, x pause, and then 0, 0. And all I'm doing next is if the position of the circle goes beyond the boundary of our particular div element, just set the position back to negative 500, so it loops back to the beginning. So nothing too fancy here. Now, what I want to do though is this line is problematic. And for reasons mentioned earlier, I might decide to change from translate 3D to just translate or I might want to add a rotation to this as well. If I want to do any more things, I'm going to keep having to make this particular value increasingly longer. And this is also not great because I'm in JavaScript. If I have any CSS styling errors or any syntax errors, those will not be caught here. It's all just nitrates of giant string. So any tooling advantages I might have with JavaScript or with CSS are also missed. So it's one more thing there. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to first take this entire line, I'm gonna comment it out for now. So if I comment it out, you'll see that nothing is moving, everything is fine there. I'm gonna go into my circle style rule. I'm gonna go ahead and specify transform, translate 3D, 
and then just give it zero pixels, zero, and zero. And the reason I'm doing this is just to make sure that everything looks, everything seems to be working fine. If I see 100, do I see my circle moving? Yep, my circle is moving. So this style rule and the value I specified is correct. Now what I'm gonna do is specify a custom property for specifying the position of my circle. So I'm gonna specify this as horizontal position. And I'm gonna give it a value of zero. And that's essentially it. And so actually we give it a hundred value just so I can make sure it all works appropriately. And I'm gonna do dash dash, and actually var dash dash horizontal position. Does this work? Nope, and it's because I don't have px specified here. Now this is correct. So horizontal position, 100 pixels, and my variable of horizontal position is being applied here for this part. Now, what I'm gonna do next is, you might have already guessed it if you're familiar with custom properties, is have our value of x pause modify the value of the horizontal position, horizontal pause, CSS custom property. So I'm gonna go ahead and do circle dot style dot set property. And this is the syntax for being able to change the value of set prop of, of a custom property in CSS. And it's in our circle element. So this is absolutely the right scope to be targeting it. And the property is gonna be called dash dash horizontal pause. And the value is going to be x pause plus pixel. All right. So now if I refresh this page, you're gonna now see that our blue circle is moving just like it was doing before. But the way we did it now is by using set property and setting the value of a custom property that in turn is translated into the horizontal position that we need in CSS to pull this off. And what this means is that you can now see, I can I get nice syntax information, I get you know code hints on what this property actually does. So I get a lot of nice benefits there, but the biggest one by all means is that if I decided to let's say, let's say translate 3D is not what I want to do. I just want to do it translate. Just a translate, remove this last value here, refresh, and you can see the animation still works appropriately as opposed to me going to JavaScript and making some of these changes. And I could also use this result position value for many more things in my CSS. I might decide to have many a nested element within my circle that also is respect the value of horizontal position. I can have, rely on cascading rules to pull all of this off. And so that's a really quick way of being able to see how we've taken an animation that was defined in JavaScript. We're modifying a CSS value, but instead of specifying that entirely in JavaScript like we might have done historically, I'm showing a more maintainable way where we can use custom properties as a proxy for being able to change the value and have the CSS be defined fully inside a style rule as opposed to in JavaScript itself. So that is pretty cool. If you have any questions on this or any web development topic, post in the forums at forum.group.com where I and others would be happy to help you out. Subscribe to my newsletter where I talk about a variety of topics related to technology, design, and business, which I'm sure is very relevant to a lot of you here. If you want more bite-sized updates on things that I'm doing or experimenting with, follow me on Twitter at Krupa. And lastly, if you like my style of explaining things, if you like this visual approach for simplifying complicated technical topics, check out my books. I have a bunch of them on a variety of front-end topics that might be relevant for you. They're in paperback and Kindle editions. And as you may find in some of my links in my Twitter, cats love them, my cats love these books. So there you go. You can get more bang for your buck there. And with that, I'll see you all next time.